So in this video, we will be talking about electromagnetic waves and its source and its nature. So now the question is how electromagnetic waves are produced or how are they in existence? Now you know electromagnetic that is there is an electric field and there is also a magnetic field that is attached to that particular wave. So now you know that if there is a charge Q, say suppose this is a charge Q. Now if it is in a steady place, that is this charge is steady. So if this charge is steady, we know that it will produce an electric field. We know because of our charge, electric field is produced. So when they are steady, electric field is produced. Electric field. Now if we come to the next point, so what happens when the charge is moving? When the charge is in motion, we know that if charge is in motion, then you know current is produced and when there is current, we know magnetic field is produced. Due to the motion or due to the uniform motion, uniform motion of charge, magnetic field is produced. Magnetic field is produced. So this is what we know. But if this is moving then magnetic field, if this is stationary then electric field. So how are electromagnetic waves produced? Now we will just be discussing the source of electromagnetic wave. We won't be going into the proof at least for this point of time. Later on in our next or some previous videos we had discussed how to prove the existence of electromagnetic force so if you are comfortable you can consult that videos where we have given you a proof so for now for this course for ncrt course we will be just discussing about the source of electromagnetic waves now the source of electromagnetic wave is when a charged particle this is a charged particle charged particle is accelerated when they are accelerated then there is a production of electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves so this is what happens in steady state electric field in motion magnetic and in acceleration we have electromagnetic waves so this is the source of electromagnetic waves now if we talk about the nature of electromagnetic waves what we know is that it has both electric and magnetic properties magnetic properties so let's have a discussion on its two properties and its nature. So we know that it has an electric nature that is it's an electric field wave and therefore we can write this as E0 that is the highest peak in the sign Kx or Kz anything in your book it is given as Kz but let's take Kx minus omega t. Now x is just the field that you want to calculate. Say suppose this is your x axis and suppose this is your y axis. Say suppose. In your book it is explained that so this will be your z axis. So this will be your z axis. So the wave is propagating along this. Along this. Say suppose this is an electric field. So now you can see and there is your and this field. So this is propagating along Z. But what we have done over here is we have taken this to be our X axis. This is our Y and this is our Z. So now the wave is propagating along X axis and it is oscillating perpendicularly to the electric field is oscillating perpendicularly to the magnetic field and magnetic field is oscillating perpendicularly to the electric field. Again, if you look at, <coughs> excuse me, 
So for now, if you take this to be Z, this is the Z axis. If you take this to be the Z axis and this to be, this to be your X axis and this to be your Y axis, say, if you want to understand what is written in your book, you can understand it in this way. The position of X, say, suppose this is your X axis. This is your X axis. So the position of X is dependent upon what will be the wave's position that is E of X. This is position of X. Now it will be dependent upon at what coordinate of Z it is present. That is if you are writing this in this way E X is equal to E naught sine K Z minus omega T. So the position of X is dependent upon Z and T that is the time t that is the time t at and this time t is at what time at what time of the wave at what time is it traveling so if you take this to be time t equals to say t naught or t equals to zero now any one will do you need both the position and the time to determine the place of the wave in your x-axis so this is how you can express this. Now this was all about your electric field. Now if you want to understand what is your magnetic field. Now magnetic field is this. This is If this is a magnetic field. This is a magnetic field. Magnetic field. If this is a magnetic field. Then it will. Then the position. Then the position will be determined by By. This is your Y coordinate. This is a Y plane. So the position of Y will depend. That is the wave will depend. What is the position of Y? Will depend upon this Z and the time T. This Z and the time T. And this is equal to B naught sine of KZ minus omega T. So Y is also given as B naught sine KZ minus omega T which is traveling in this direction. This is magnetic field and if you look over here, this is, if I draw this with a different color, this is your electric field. This particular is your electric field. Electric field. So I hope now we are clear. Now what is this K? If you want to define what is this K, where K is related to the wavelength related to the wavelength the wavelength lambda what is the wavelength that is k is related to the wavelength and k is actually given as k is equal to twice pi by lambda therefore lambda therefore the wavelength is actually given by twice pi by k so if you are talking about k at what point in Z at what point is is this wave completing is this wave completing now if you look over here twice pi by lambda this is your radian twice pi is your radian it is angular and lambda is your length so we are comparing with the degree with the length so k is k is a quantity is a measurement quantity in degrees in degrees or radian in degrees so this is how we can understand and the relation of k as we have established earlier k is equal to twice pi by lambda now you know another term that is omega omega for you as we have discussed earlier is your angular frequency it's your angular frequency this is your angular frequency. Now, say suppose, what is actually K? If I ask myself the question, what is actually K? Even though I know this is a ratio between the twice pi, that is the complete degree divided by the complete wavelength. Complete degree, that is twice pi is a complete degree divided by the wavelength, a complete wave. So what does this K actually tells us about? So if you want to know that K is the magnitude of the wave vector. What is the magnitude? 
what is this is magnitude of the wave vector magnitude of the wave vector so this is the magnitude of the wave vector now if you further let's do this in our next slide 